Yes, well, the, if we remember that Gold Coast had made an error outside their own danger zone and uh, it was a matter of hands by the Canberra boys. And Nagus, who's played pretty well in the fullback role, he finished it off. Mel probably could have scored, but he's an unselfish black. A little bit of luck, I suppose, for the Gold Coast in scoring their try. But I have to apologise to the referee, Mick Lewis. I thought it was a knock-on, but from that view, he made the right decision. He did. He's gone pretty well, Mick Lewis, in his first grade debut. And that was dead set knocked out by a Canberra player. And good work by the Coast. I mean, last year they may not have scored that try, but they're on the ball tonight and they're getting players in the right position. ...against the Gold Coast was scored with other sides running around them. And uh, he's worked hard to try and stop it, but already tonight two tries and they've both been scored out wide by running around. The kick is successful. The writing was on the board here with Canberra making a fairly easy bus. A beautiful ball there from Laurie Daly. Got Croker into a gap. He throws the dummy to Meninga. And as Paul pointed out, Goddard did a great job to get across there, not for the first time tonight. But this is this gave the Gold Coast an opportunity to get set, but the players didn't fan. And the number 18 does particularly well here for Canberra. He, he took one of the early passes, backs up to take that one there, and Boyle benefited. Back with the action, Raiders in front. Right just about on their own quarter. Eight to four, the Raiders over the Gold Coast. Wesley playing it just outside his own quarter. Here's Lomax. Forward pass reel there by Lewis. That's a crucial mistake made right in front of their post, only 20 metres out by Canberra. Pretty ordinary pass from Steve Tome. <laughs> Dead set went forward. And uh, so the goal case now, they'll be in a very good uh, field position to try and put something on. Coleman works the scrum. Gill picks it up at the scrum base. It's for Coleman trying to link up with his winger, Bouveng. Defence got to him too quickly. Well, they put a move on there, the old chestnut from the back of the scrum, but no support for, Crow, uh, for Craig Coleman. He should have had at least maybe a, a fullback there. Yeah, the fullback should have been aware of that move. Well, I think they were, that was actually part of the plan, Paul, to put everybody over the right-hand side so Canberra would think they were going that way. But Ferner, especially from the scrum base, he broke quickly and able to round it up fairly easily. And there's the mistake that they cannot afford to keep coming up with. Wayne Bartram just taking his eyes off the ball. All the pressure off in what was a great opportunity for them. Pressure situations, that's what makes the difference, isn't it, between these two teams. If you can handle pressure in defence or control the football in a pressure situation, you'll probably win more games than you lose. It's like a bit of a case here. There might be a couple of jobs floating around this Winfield Cup again in 12 months. <laughs> oh, great ball. That's Mullins. Beautiful pass. Mullen straight down the touchline. Comes to Boozian. Stepped inside him. And he got support too. And look at this. It's the Raiders raiding away. Jimmy Vercoso takes it up to about eight metres away from the Gold Coast line. Troy Peterson. Across to Stone. Here's Ferner. Got support from Meninga. Back it comes for Boyle. A pass to no one in particular. Stone picks it up. Play just on the Gold Coast quarter. Stone back inside that quarter. Now it's a cross for Lomax. Dropping it behind him. Picked up by Peterson. What the Coast were doing well early in this game. They're not now. They're not stopping the football. As Murray Daly on the fifth tackle. Kicks for his outside men. Just hung up in time. David Bouvang forced to take it over. So a good kick from Daly which means they'll get possession back but the Gold Coast falling into the trap of allowing the Raiders to get the ball away in tackles. Unfortunately for Boovang really just couldn't take the chance of the Chasers not being close enough to score the try. Really had to make a bird of it and unfortunately there'll be more defence to be done. Now the Gold Coast send this down towards the halfway mark. Pongier. Freestone on, Campion off for the, uh, for the coast. Campion just about on the Gold Coast quarter. Stone at dummy half. Where to go? Now they're only about 15 metres out from the Gold Coast line. Stone at dummy half. The switch of play for Daly, who coughs it up. And 
Russell Boosian almost held as he tried to fall on the loose ball. A pretty ordinary kick there to Laurie Daly, but with his hands, you'd almost expect him to catch it. But no doubt that there was a move on out wide. He was just going through with what they'd planned before he actually caught the football. He's played well, Daly. He's handled the football on a lot of occasions, getting into first receiver a lot of time, and there you see him in defence once again strong. Well, the coast on their own quarter. Trying to break this Canberra defence. Pretty well drilled side, Canberra. Bartram. 30 out. Here's Coleman. Now he's running straight. Goddard went to dummy half. It's for Gill. Back for Boozian. Mullins, who seems to be back in the fullback position, maybe gets off for a short time. And the big man bring it up again. See now, 10 metres short of the halfway mark. Here's Osborne. Again, you see two defenders there both going low on. Paul Osborne, they must start wrapping this football up. And that means the first man has probably got to go in fairly high and wrap the football up, then maybe someone low to make sure the man ends up in the ground. But while they're drawing two and three defenders and getting the ball away, the defence must be in trouble. There's the mistake they needed. Ferner's first mistake of the game. So the Coast bring it back. Boozian will play it about 10 short of the halfway mark. Played well, uh, David Ferner, today. He's... Uh... Very useful forward. He's, he looks like he's bulked up a bit in the off-season, but he still retains that little deft step that he's got, which is a big advantage when they're running amongst the peaks. Adrian Vowles. Still short of the halfway mark. Coleman picking up with McCarthy. And again, a Gold Coast mistake. Hands over possession to the Raiders. The start of a big year rugby league. It's players like Daly, Meninga, and possibly Ferner playing their first game. Here we are in February, February the 9th, and it's going to end for them uh, probably sometime in uh, late November after the Kangaroo Tour. So a big hit there. Great hit by uh, Toka. Now away goes Stone. He's menaced by Freestone. With Daly. Mullins. 35 out from the Gold Coast line. And again, the, the Gold Coast defence is, is holding OK. And on the last tackle, the Raiders spin it out for Daly. Can't offload. And has lost possession. So the Coast come up with the football again. Just got over five minutes to try and stop this deficit of four points against them. Eight four on the scoreboard at the moment. They've had to do a lot of defence down there. A little bit leg weary at the moment. Canberra trying to force a mistake here. Craig Coleman continues to scheme and looking to pick up men out wide. Found Vowles. Adrian Vowles just on the halfway mark now. And Coleman's dummy half this time. Picked up Tocco. Out for Herring. Yeah, good ball there by Tocco, who was held by two men, still offloaded. And good second phase play by Herring, who ran onto that pass from Coleman. This is better stuff from the coast. McCarthy with the kick through. Mullins playing fullback is content to watch the ball just dribble across the line. Steve Rates, what do you think of Tocco? Well, I think he's a sensational player. He's only a 21-year-old. He, he played in under-21s last year. He's got good uh, good hitting skill, and, and we saw there that he had two on a tackle and he could offload the football. I'd just like to see the goal case and the forwards mix it up a little bit better. They're just running one out at the moment. Easy targets for the Canberra side. Scrums are favoured the coast 4-1. And they're coming up Amongst all of that was uh, Troy Patterson. Just on the uh, Canberra quarter. 
Pongier. It's about three and a half minutes remaining in this second quarter. And there's been a loose ball in there by Canberra. Their ball security uh, hasn't been good. Oh, neither side's been good. It's the heat. The ball's oh, probably a bit slippery and Blake's get tired and they don't concentrate. And here's another chance for the case. Probably their last before half time. Try and put some points on the board. Coleman working the scrum for the coast. And McCarthy. They've linked up with Bouvang, who came inside his opposite man. And David Bouvang will score for the Gold Coast. Well, wow. great step off his left foot, Matty. Oh, great run. He had plenty of work to do, Bouvang. But nice switch of play by the case from that scrum. It's the second or third time they've, time they've tried it. And they've come up with a try here. McCarthy got involved. This is a good pass by Vowles. Now look at this. He's beaten one, beats another, beat Mullins, point black, uh, blank. And away he goes, Boovang. So the goal cased. Big chance to go to the lead here. Kick from right in front. Nice pass here by Vowles. Uh, still one on one here, but he had the, the angle on him. And the big left foot step. He's got plenty of speed too. Yeah, that was a classy looking try from David Bouvang. And bear it all came from that uh, little mistake made by Canberra in front of their own pace. So the coast of the opportunity to hit the front at the end of the second quarter. Wayne Bartram will try the uh, shot for goal. The way that he kicked the first attempt a little while back, uh, there's no certainty about this. But he kicks it ever so calmly. And hello, the Gold Coast hit the front, 10 to 8 over the Canberra Raiders. And their Crowman goes one way. McCarthy comes from the other side now. It's still two on two there, but uh, that's a good, just the step. That's all it was. That's what made, uh, made the try for the Gold Coast, the step and the speed of David Booving. We've certainly got a game on our hands. Canberra. Certainly not anxious to get uh, started again. They know there's just a tick over a minute left before they can have a break. All players will be looking forward to the break because it's very, very steamy out there. Energy sapping. Had enough in the commentary box, Fatty. It certainly is, Bear. And uh, probably if there was one mistake made by Kimber there, it was it, you could probably look at the winger, Vicoso, uh, and say that he was in too close to the scrum. He should have possibly been wider. If he's in too close uh, like he was, then he's given Bouvang too much room to move. So probably a, a slight mistake made there by him. But he's only young and he's inexperienced. He'll learn from that. So the coast, with about half a minute left in this quarter, on, on their own quarter. And the Canberra Raiders on the wrong end of the ledger. Here's Troy McCarthy. He was involved in that try. He came in from the far wing. Five tackles used up by the coast. It's back for Coleman. A kick down for Mullins. Mullins surrounded by Gold Coast jumpers. Takes the tackle 30 out from his own line. Mercoso goes into dummy half. Running from there as the siren sounds. And that will end the second quarter. 10 to 8. The Gold Coast lead Canberra here at Penrith Football Stadium, back in just a moment. Welcome back to Penrith Stadium for this, the third quarter of the Tui's Challenge match between the Canberra Raiders and the Gold Coast Seagulls. And Blocker Roach is on the sideline. He's been in the Canberra huddle at halftime. Block. Yeah, well, Timmy Sheen's not too happy with his side. He's saying that they're taking the uh, Gold Coast just a little bit too easy. Although at the uh, the Canberra players are suffering from the heat because they're not used to the heat, obviously, the Gold Coast up from the warmer climate. He'd like to see his team improve the kicking game. He said a few times we've been in good field position, but we've just coughed the ball up. He'd like to see that an improvement. Steve, just quickly, any report on Steve Walters at Yes, all? Steve Walters is all right. He'll be back. He's just got a little bit of concussion. It was just a bit of putting your knees in the wrong place. Good on your block. Thank you. Gold Coast in possession. And they lead by 10 points to eight over the Canberra Raiders. Uh, just inside the quarter. Really, they have been uh, 
a surprise packet tonight at the Gold Coast. Defence on most of the occasions has been pretty good. Unfortunately for them, handling errors costing them possession at vital times. However, they're still able to come up with a two-point lead as we into this third quarter. It's one statistic I didn't make mention of there at halftime was the fact that Canberra have been able to break the line on a few more occasions in the goal case. That is going to put a lot of pressure on both Craig Coleman and Peter Gill to be able to come up with the kind of passes we saw in that first half from Daly, Meninga, Ferner, Croker. David Lomax up the middle for the Raiders, just inside the Gold Coast territory. It's John Lomax slipping, needs to get the pass away, however. Now it's Pongjia. Croker. And Meninga sending Boozian back for it. Mullins coming in over the top. He did well there, Russell Boozian. He's only a youngster. I remember watching him in the Commonwealth Band Cup playing for Toowoomba High School. The year that they got beaten, I think, a point by Fairfield Patrician Brothers. And he's one player that's kicked on, gone into grade, and looking to cement that fullback spot at the Gold Coast. It was Dale Shearer. He'll be back in action shortly, so he's... What a big job. He's played quite well out there tonight. Been fairly steady. I've got a feeling Dale Shearer might be playing centre this year for the Coast. I believe that's his best position. So it is a big opportunity for Boosian to um, really grab hold of this spot. I know that Bowles and Cook are both uh, fair centres for the Coast, but I believe that the Shearer's best position is that particular spot. It, why is that, Paul? What, what the attributes to the well, centre look, that you like? I know him very well. I, I just know back at fullback, he's got too much time to himself. And he can mess up, you know, he's been in the centres. <laughs> no, it's fair. Glad you know him well. Yeah, and uh, in the centres, he's just straight on the ball and hitting those gaps. OK, the Raiders, up and down they go, 30 metres out from their own line. They trail by two. Osborne brings it up. I mean, Shearer back at fullback, I mean, he's a sort of like, he's likely, likely to chip kick one day before he gets to the opposition and regather just to show he can do it. Canberra made a mistake here, so... Uh, Gold Coast, they're bustling Canberra with their defence, and their defence is, uh, is is very, very good. Yeah, well, Craig Carmen here appealing that it wasn't a Gold Coast hand that was a knock, forced to knock on. The referee disagreeing, so Steve Stone will feed the scrum. Yeah, who's got it at the scrum base? It's Croker who had it. Pongia over the halfway mark. Here comes Osborne. Defence is equal to him. Now Walters, who was knocked out earlier in the game, is back. Taking it up as strongly as ever. Here's Daly. Out for Croker. Croker got a ball away, which was uh, not, uh, not taken. And the Gold Coast come up with it by a tugger. Well, it was a timely hand, too, from Craig Coleman. It looked as though they'd got a a pass away to a man on the fly but fortunately for the Gold Coast Coleman was able to force an intercept and that'll be a, well oh, it's well, going to be a penalty turn it up I mean there was a Canberra hand and I'm sure of that and it looked as though Lewis was was watching that there's the hand there yeah but he hung, he still had all of it there then he lost it yeah it's a penalty got to be a penalty there no hand is allowed anywhere near that football so they've uh, been hard done by the Coast I'm going to take that green shirt off too then. <laughs> OK, the Raiders get the feed, rightly or wrongly, they get it. And they're going to get a penalty as well. Well, the number 24, Brett Horsman, being penalised here, I thought he was still bound in the scrum and... I'm sure he was, ...had Pete. every right to, to strike for that ball. The scrum had screwed around. He's just had a fair, a fair lash at this and there's nothing wrong with that. He's entitled to it. Let's have a quick look at it now. You can see there he's, well, sort of half no, he was, bound. Yeah, he was holding on to the bottom well, of the shorts. Osborne, Osborne's given it away to Walters. While you fellas are arguing about who was right and who was wrong, the Raiders have gone in to score. Well, great work there from the big man, Paul Osborne, who's done plenty out there this, in this particular game. 12-10 in favour of Canberra. We see the try here, and he, he's allowed to get his arms free. Big gap there. The number 10 did poorly for the goal case. That was Kevin Campion. Steve Wallace backing up like all good hookers takes advantage of the ball skills 
of the front rower. Yes, they had plenty of defence there, the Gold Coast, uh, plenty of numbers. Just the sheer good play by Osborne, big fellow, and he's always hard to bring down. He he always takes a couple when he gets on a roll, and uh, a couple of miss a, a missed tackle there, I think it was by Horsnell. Yeah, a little looked. dummy inside yeah. the defence at sixes and sevens as well. I thought Campion failed to move up. A little bit of a hole there. Osborne went through, and Mal having his first kick for goal won't get them any easier. From right in front, Meninga, no problem. So the Raiders regain the lead at 14 to 10. And uh, 14 minutes left in this, the third quarter. So whether, whether the Raiders were rightly or wrongly given the football back there, they still scored the try. So we'll read about it tomorrow, Fatty. Yeah, brilliant. Now it's down right on the uh, Canberra line. Jimmy Vicoso. Wallace a dummy half. Here's Lomax. Wallace again. This time it's uh, Hong Gear. And again, Walters. Pass knocked down by the coast. He's the best dummy half runner in the land at the moment, Steve Walters. He's got that little bit of pace off the mark, but he's a very powerful runner. And uh, when, inev inevitably, whenever he does get to the line, something is created because he's uh, he can pop a good ball as well. Stone working the scrum for the Raiders. Feeling about something or other. Croker just short of the halfway mark. Oh, Lomax hit hard. Oh, good tackle. Great horse on there. Number 24 for the Gold Coast. To see him in behind the ruck area. Came up with a beauty front on. Perfect tackle. Able to pick the man up and drive him back. And the ball came loose. Oh, a really tackle like that. Great hit. So the Coast have it, 40 up from the Canberra line. Kind of defence very important to a team too. It really inspires the players around. The Gold Coast will get another penalty here. Quentin Pongi are not getting off the man as quickly as the referee would have liked. Bit of a swing arm there too. So a couple of sets of six in a row here for the Gold Coast. And they should find touch. Well, in fact, they're going to kick for goal to try and get within two points of Canberra. And Paul, you were giving their no rap on their goal kicking. Oh, Bartram put it his over. He's the number one kicker in the club at the moment. So uh, this one's 30 metres out right in front. I've seen him. He kicked uh, five out of six one night last year. We covered a game, but I've also seen him missing from 10 metres right out in front. So uh, it's quite luck. There's Mel Meninga taking the option that is open to the captain. Just questioning the referee on one of the decisions. I'd imagine, imagine it would have been back towards the tackle on Quentin, that Quentin Pongia executed on the Gold Coast player to give them this opportunity to kick for goal. A very important kick, this one, for the Gold Coast. Can get them within two. Most importantly, if he does miss the goal, it must go dead. Well, he uh, has missed it, but it has gone dead, so he got it half right. No change to that score. 14 to 10. The Raiders over the Gold Coast. And it's down for Gill. Oh, Gill, Gill has knocked it on. Made a desperate attempt to regather. But he's made the error. I was talking earlier about getting kicks on the full. Maybe that occasion, because it was such a difficult one, he'd have been better off allowing it to bounce or using his feet. You'd have taken it, Fatty. <laughs> Just one-handed, probably. And one against the feet here for the Gold Coast. Yeah, take a spot of that coming out the back of the scrum, and he was on it. Now here comes Bartram. 
Great up the middle. That's a fine run from Wayne Bartram. 35 out now from the Raiders line. And the coast start to come alive, although they've coughed it up again. So the Raiders come up with possession. Here's Croker. Nagus in there at dummy half this time. And that's another fine hit from Brett Walsnall. Hey, what? Gee. Osborne. Well, Horsell's on a mission out there. That's the second uh, big hit in a matter of minutes. And he, he's got the good the good build for a big hitter because he comes in and drives in from low, comes up from the ground, a la Trevor Gilmeister. Now here's Laurie Daly. Little brother. Picked up though by Boozian. Boozian! Oh, hey, uh, Boozian's got some room to move. He's 32 out, but that's where it stops. The defence gets to him there, but that was a great run from the Gold Coast fullback. We've got Polax there by David Boyle, the centre for Canberra, but the Gold Coast continue on Scard and unfortunately slips. That's a time for the Coast to, to get their line set and, and capitalise on the situation, but they've got, they've got nothing doing here at the moment. That's where they should have a line set out right now and they should be able to spin it. Campion got a pass away. It wasn't a great one. Martin was able to fall on it. And here's Toko inside the quarter. Here's Tugger. And uh, Scarden. A little kick ahead. The ball is still alive. This could be a try. It will be. The Gold Coast hit back. It's John Scarden who scored. I thought that was an ordinary kick there at the beginning from Scarden, but Brett Mullins came up with the mistake. The ball just popped loose. The Gold Coast Chasers were able to come up with the ball to make it 14 all. It's going 10 metres in from touch. Let's have a look at the little kick, the left foot one. You can see Mullins is already back there waiting for exactly that. He goes down and the ball pops out. And it's an easy job for Adrian Bowles to pick up and score. I think the key player here is this tackle by Scarden. I thought he had just about had control of the ball there, but Scarden with the big tackle over the top popped it loose again, and Vols on the spot there. So the case live again. Adrian Vols had a big game, some big uh, defence on Meninga a couple of times. He's been pretty heavily involved. He's a fairly impressive player. Steve Wright, sideline. Yeah, let's not forget the big hits from Brett Horsnell. They're the sort of things that inspire a team and set up that sort of play. He started the game on the bench tonight. I think he's out to show a big one, so he'll be in the starting lineup next time. Certainly, he's made some great hits. Now, this kick is about uh, three metres in from touch. Perfect view of it right there. What price, Stella? Hey, I got your money at Riverside Oaks today, so you can have whatever <laughs> price you want. Yeah. Should play with your eyes open next time. Well, it's swinging around, but nowhere near enough. So 14 apiece, Canberra and the Gold Coast. And there's about six minutes of this quarter remaining. And this has been a pretty entertaining game of football so early in the season. It seems a can we get on top and then all of a sudden the Gold Coast hit back. That's to try and combat the heat out here at Penrith Stadium. It's really a sweltering evening. The fans are working overtime there, just trying to cool the players down. Steve, you wouldn't be far away from those fans, I'd imagine. No, it's, it's called the comfort zone. What happens is that Fangin also sprays out a bit of water to cool down the players. It's the first time it's been used in Australia. The Australian Rugby Union side used it on their trip to America and Canada. Can they send one up here, Block? A big pun? Can they send one up here? <laughs> I want one here. This one of my size is not working yet. Now here's the coast. After equalising, they have it about, uh, well, almost 30 metres out from their own line. And probing out wide, but the Canberra defence moving across, covering no problems. Here's Cook. Last tackle now for the coast. It was an intelligent run there from Terry Cook. He took the ball back to the middle of the field knowing it was the last tackle to give his kickers a better option. Even though Vols hasn't done a particularly good job, he's found Nagus on the full. You really want to be in the centre of the field to kick so that the options are much more than being hemmed close to the sideline. 
Now Canberra bring it back. With the four and a half left in this quarter. Here's Ferner. Walters. Walters spots that little gap and makes just about 10 metres again. Continue to bring this football up hard. This is Wesley. Last tackle now for the Raiders. Meninga uncharacteristically loses the football. Even the greats can come up with the simple mistake. And the reason that he did was why anybody will drop the ball. Just took his eyes off it. His last tackle, he knew he had to kick the football. Ray Herring makes five or six metres before being back slammed by Croker. Dictating the play as Bartram runs off his pass. Just inside the Canberra half. Scarden selects Cook. So Daly is up there quickly. Boyle. Boyle again to make the tackle. Here's Boozian. Boozian got out of one. Vicoso tried to pick it up for the Raiders and it's been picked up by Scarden but uh, they'll play the knock on. Oh, bad luck for the case here. Nice little run by Boosie and he feigned a kick, found a gap and went for it. Not bad on the fifth tackle. Look, he, he steps inside Ferner there and up he goes the middle and then the nice little kick, the option at the end and uh, they come up with the case but Cook couldn't control the football but they're playing some good footy. Just before that piece of action, you saw Mick Lewis talk to the touch judge to find out what had happened there at the close of play to see who was going to feed that scrum. It went Canberra's way. A little bit of innovation there from the fullback, Russell Boozian. Looked dangerous. Now here's David Lomax. Croker. The Ferner. All the way through there. Well, I know that you can be a little bit wary of rule changes and that, but I'm a fan of this new rule that they've brought in as a good ball to Finau down the sideline. He's done a great job to beat three and four defenders and get a pass away to link up with Walters. And he turn links up with, is that Croker or Boyle? That's Boyle on the Boyle. Well, there should have been a penalty there because uh, Nagus back on the inside was held back by a Gold Coast player. So that's an opportunity where the... Uh, Larry Linesman, Martin Weeks, could have maybe intervened with that microphone. We're in his shoe or something, is it? Somewhere there. Uh, thanks, Max. There's a good break made here, and David Boyle puts the pace on, gets through the gap. Now, what's Nagus on the inside? He gets held back there by Terry Cook. I was just talking about that rule earlier. There's another big hit there, this time from John Lomax, with the penalties and the scrums now 20 metres in from the sideline the Canberra coach Tim Sheens introduced that or raised the issue with the, the rugby league it really does give an opportunity to attack from those areas more so than just that 10 metres I'm not a fan of too many rule changes in this uh, great game we've got here but that one's a good one uh, just yeah too many. It'll, have, it'll give sides a lot of options and uh, it'll open the game up it's, it's very good work by Tim Sheens and well done by the Australian Rugby League to go on with it Here's Daly. Haven't seen Daly really run tonight. He's been content to kick and pass. A little half break there. Now here's Walters again, dumbing twice before the big steam train. Mal Meninga oh, bursts luck. onto the football. And in he goes, the big man. Well, good work there from Steve Walters once again, but poor reading in defence. I think you'll find it was Jamie Goddard, the 11, who was caught out by the Gold Coast. We talked about the angles earlier tonight. Defence gets a bit tired. It means someone will get lazy. Walters went across, set two runners inside and eventually gave it to the third. The defence was just put out. You see they haven't gone across. Ray Herring was slow to go across. It was probably his fault more than anybody else. Meninga just too much pace and right on three-quarter time. He's done it all before, Mel, hasn't he? Look at him go. More chance of stopping the fair star. Boosian. Uh, 
Well done, Mel, and good work by Steve Wallers. I know last year, Steele, you and I copped some because we criticised Mel. He started off a bit slow, but he started pretty well tonight, and that just goes to show that he's in for a big year. Now, here's David Ferner. As the, you've heard the third quarter siren sound, yet to kick one tonight. Let's see what he can do with this one. Scored about uh, oh, seven or eight in from the, from the sideline. And this is going to be way to the left, so no luck for him. We go to the third quarter break with the score 18 to 14. Canberra over the Gold Coast back in just a moment. Good to have you with us at Penrith Stadium for the 1994 Tui's Challenge. Canberra and the Gold Coast and the Raiders lead 18 to 14 as we get underway in this fourth quarter. Steve Roach has been in the Gold Coast huddle block. Yeah, John Harvey had some interesting things to say. He said, look, when Steve Walters runs from dummy half across the field, let him run into the grandstand. Make sure you keep your line in defence. That was the try. One person didn't come up in the line and Mal Maminga went through the gap. He said, look, when we've got them down there in their own half on their line, we worry the hell out of them. He said, but when they're in our half, he said, you're worrying the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good on you. Block, thanks. Here's the Gold Coast with the football. And on the sixth. Sending it back for the Raiders to bring back. Raiders lead by four points, 18 to 14. Here's Finau. Just about on the halfway mark. 18 to 14. The Raiders lead the Gold Coast. Osborne turning it back for Ferner. Stone is a dummy half. Dickerson is out there. Daly, quick hands to Croker. Croker will play it, 30 metres out. Daly down the blind side. Quick hands from the Raiders. It's come out to uh, Finau. Now Peterson but, uh, over the touch line. And this uh, will be a turnover. To the Gold Coast now. With 18 minutes to go in this game, they're well in this match the Gold Coast they trail by four you need to just play intelligent football down this end of the field get a good kick a good chase try and force a mistake and really throw some options at this Canberra defense got plenty of bodies in motion they need to score a converter try to get away with this game so they've got to be a little bit adventurous in the right area of the field now, this pass not a great one picked up by Patterson They're short of the halfway mark, the Gold Coast. Joey McCarthy out there. <laughs> Vowles will play it just inside the Canberra half. Coleman has his head bandaged for this quarter. I don't think it's to keep the hair out of his eyes, that's for sure. Must have a slight cut on his uh, melon somewhere. He's gone pretty well tonight, Tugger. He's settling into his new club. Pretty strong stuff there by Finnau. He's fended off a couple, a couple of would-be's, but uh, Tucker's gone fairly well. He hasn't got a long kicking game, which is something the case might suffer from. Uh, I know that Vowles has done a couple of kicks there, not so long either, but he's got a very a good kicking game as far as putting in just behind the line. It's concerned. A mistake here by Canberra, by Croker, a ball he probably should have choked on, and he's dropped it. Well, in plenty of areas, this really is where Craig Coleman has to rise to the occasion and let the experience come out of... It's a simple pass, went to ground there by Jason Croker. With his experience, his guile, and really his leadership, just keeping the players from panicking, letting them know that they are in this game if they don't give away silly mistakes and penalties and don't allow soft tries, as I believe the last two have been from Osborne and Meninga. Good scoring opportunity here for the Gold Coast. With the play 30 metres out, they've used up only one tackle. Here's Peter Gill. Herring is a dummy half. And very nearly coughing the football up was Robert Tocco. Pulled it back in though, right on the quarter line now. Here's Coleman. Short ball for Goddard. 
Well, uh, 12 metres out from the Canberra line. Coleman working the same way for McCarthy. Back inside goes Freestone. And the pass from Freestone very close to the ground. Coleman's gone back for it. Back for Terry Cook now. Cook gets to the 10 metre mark. And they've used up five, the coast. Well, they've got numbers to the right if they're prepared to throw it. Herring tries to do it himself. Nearly does so. Terry Cook chasing well there, but they really did have a three-man overlap. Fortunately, they'll get the ball back. Touched last by a Canberra player. Yes, Herring on that occasion either didn't have a call from his outside men or didn't read the play, but uh, as Sturlo said, a big overlap to the right. Could have been a try on, but the next best thing for the coast is Mullins uh, seems to be troubled with a... Well, he's got a leg injury, possibly a hamstring twinge, and uh, he's down getting treatment. But the case will get the I'll get the ball back here and uh, another six goes at the Canberra defence. Right down to almost the halfway mark is the kick. Peter Gill catches it okay this time and brings it back about uh, 25 or so out from the Raiders line. Boosie in a dummy half. Yeah, by David Furner. Croker comes up with the, the tackle on Goddard. Bartram will play it. There's 12 out. And uh, Adrian Vowles, but uh, the referees spotted a little forward pass in there. Yeah, it's a shame, too. The Gold Coast here putting on a set of plays. Obviously, two or three tackles involved in it. Getting three and four men in motion around the dummy half area and then picking out the men who they believe could make the bust. The final pass here to Adrian Vowles, just going forward. Yeah, here's Laurie Daly. Some room for him to move. He's over the quarter line now, Daly. Looks for the support. Couldn't get the pass in. The kick is the next best thing. And uh, it's a race for the ball. Boozian gets there first for the coast. But Kenny Nagus was chasing that ball through at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, well done by Boozian. Daly made a good bust for him. Good to see him running. He's a lovely player when he's in action. Got those legs striding out. Put the kick in. Uh, in and away by Daly. Got around McCarthy all well, all pretty well. And uh, Nagus back on the inside. Boozian did well. He had to come up, then turn and chase. So good work by him. So play back just on the halfway mark as the coast bring it up once again. Campion. Here's Coleman again. Now McCarthy. McCarthy kicking for Patterson. But uh, I think it was Vacoso got in there first for the Raiders. Now Nagus. Strong. I think fellow this uh, Petrosini was impressive, I thought on occasions in the sevens and he's looked okay out there tonight when he's been on. Here's Daly. Ferner. Who wants it? I'll have it. It's mine. Now it's yours. And a mix up there between Steve Stone and Laurie Daly. The ball popped back inside. They both went for the same ball. The referee has found a knock on in there. You can see Daly reacts at the exact same, same time as his halfback did. The Gold Coast 40 metres out, centre field, almost. Good time to put something on. They go to their back line. And it's fairly pedestrian stuff from the scrum. I think they're great attacking opportunities, but Bowles just really an easy mark for the defence. Now Terry Cook trying to thread his way up the middle. Fred Mullins on the sideline getting treatment for a corked thigh. Coleman got a beautiful pass away for Jamie Goddard, but again... It's gone astray. Coleman did the good work. Well, they've done well. They've made the bust, and the try was on, but inexperienced by uh, young Goddard, who tried to get away a miracle ball. And lovely pass. Look at Goddard. Into some space. Tries to unleash the one-handed, left-handed, round-the-corner pass. With the reverse pike and twist. With one of those as well, and uh, Canberra came up with the ball. Now, a mistake by them. So it's... Been a game, it's been a pretty good game, but it's been one riddled with handling errors. The scrum is uh, on the 30 metre mark, 30 out from the Canberra line. And the coast working it. Coleman. 
playing out to the far right of the home. As the coast get inside the Canberra quarter. Goddard. See, that's a waste to tackle it. With 18 metres out, Canberra, if they'd been in the same position, would have had three and four attacking players involved. There's another settler, basically, from Steve Weston, his first appearance in the game. So not a lot of pressure put on the defence here. It is the last. They've got to get the ball back or put the bomb up to try and score the try. Bartram with the kick. They've done neither. And the big man brings it back for the Raiders. Daly makes a couple of metres. Very bunched camber, aren't they? There's some of the replacements that have gone on. Herring, Campion's on there, Tocco. Now the Raiders bring it up to the quarter again. Well, is it dummy half. Again, he runs from there. Then got the pass away for Ferner. Pirouettes and gets out of one tackle. Been the two best players, I feel, Walters and uh, Ferner tonight. They've been involved in everything. Walters has had a couple of breaks off the field with uh, a bad knock he got, but everything they've done has stemmed from his running from dummy half. Back with Boozy in again, back in his own territory after that kick from Daly. 18 to 14, the Raiders over the coast. And there's uh, about uh, well, just under 10 remaining in the fourth and final quarter. Goes. Coleman. Coleman kicking out there for Patterson. But Daly's first man there for the Raiders and will be forced to take the tackle. Ah, cooling, refreshing. Sounds like a commercial, isn't it? Now the Raiders bring it back. Oh, gee, that was a good tackle there by Patterson because Nagas was just about away. And uh, kept, kept at him. Did Patterson, young Banjo. Or was it Scarden? I think it's Scarden, actually, the 5'8. Makes the good tackle. Well, there's 10 out from the halfway mark, and they've given up possession again. But uh, hopefully, we'll bring it back. The Raiders are giving the Gold Coast some opportunities down here. In the last 10 minutes, we've seen three or four mistakes, and fairly simple mistakes made by the Raiders. Really should have just been looking to settle things down and get a good kick at the end of it. The Gold Coast now, 40 metres out. Steve Weston can't beat the tackle. Of Quentin Pongia, that's number one. Patterson, the dummy half, the run, run around with him. Coming back a metre or two. Bartram, now it's for Coleman. And then comes Adrian Vowles up to the quarter line, floats one out there for uh, David Bouvang. The ball in the in goal area, but uh, the Raiders are able to get back to it with Lomax. Well, Vowles has had a great game for the Gold Coast. He fair have looked like Reg Gasney here running through these gaps. One step there, another one here, and away he goes. And a nice pass on the end of it. Only went a metre forward, it didn't matter. And uh, ne very nearly a try in the end, so they'll get some more position here, the Coast. Nice stepping here by uh, left, right, Wooshka. So the restart. Back it comes down to the halfway mark. And a very good dropout from the, the, the Raiders. Apart from being long, that was taken on the 50 metre line. They're very high and that allows the chasing team extra time to get up there. Steve Weston gets out of dummy half. 25 metres out with four tackles in hand. Here's Gill. Back for Coleman. Finds his way to the quarter. Bartram dummy half. Turns it back for Herring. Now they're only about 15 out. Gill again. Gill. And Gill's brought down on the fifth, about five metres out from the Raiders' line. Coleman, the little grabber kick. Daly's there, picks it up beautifully. A class piece of play there by Laurie Daly. 
almost made, he made it look easy, didn't he, in the end? I mean, probably 90% of players would have fumbled and bumbled that, but uh, he just made it look so good. He just reads the play so well. Craig Coleman has attempted two different types of kick. One, a, a flatter kick across for his wingers. Sure enough, Laurie Daly picked the ball up, nearly fed Nagus, took the tackle himself. And on that occasion, right on the try line, the little one was coming through, all the pressure off. Again, as Paul pointed out, he didn't just dive on the ball, he picked it up and was ready to go if the defence was lax in any way. Now the Raiders are about uh, 30 metres out from their own line. Stone and across for Daly. Sends it down for Boozian again. Boozian back only 10 metres or so from his own line by the time he picked it up. Chases are there. Yeah, well, he need to get back there a lot quicker than that. Really just jogging back to the ball. To get back there now, he's dropped it. Oh. Could be a very costly error for the coast. Well, that's just tragic for the Gold Coast and for John Harvey. The Gold Coast coach, I mean, there they are inside their danger zone, 20 metres out, and to come up with a fumble. John Harvey, his big halves. Now, here are the Raiders in a wonderful attacking position here. Straight across field goes Daly, looks for Mullins. Mullins beats one, beats two, stands, offloads to, to uh, the, the centre three quarter Boyle. Boyle is pulled down only five metres out from the Gold Coast line. Here's Daly again. Away it goes for Stone. Stone steps off his right. He's still five metres short of the line. And again, from dummy half, they're pulled down only a metre short. Petrosen. Across it comes. And a number of players go down. It looked like uh, Croker it was. Here's Walters. Walters turns it away for Stone. Stone, one-handed pass. Back to Finau. Finau will score. He bounced the ball. No He's try. dropped it. No try. Yeah, good defence there. Nice interplay by the Raiders. We see a quick start here from Craig Coleman for the Gold Coast. As Nagus there just can't get the ball down. No downward pressure. Good decision. He's had a good game, Mick Lewis. He has for his, uh, for his first effort. There's no doubt about that, it came out. <laughs> 18 to 14. Only about uh, three and a half left. The coast have it, 10 metres short of halfway. Here's Gill. Back for Coleman. And uh, Coleman got it across for Weston. Unfortunately for Steve Weston, he put it down. So this scrum will go down five metres short of halfway as placement's going on for the Canberra side. And it looks as though with just under three minutes to go, Canberra might sneak away with a win here. It hasn't been overly impressive. I'm not taking anything away from the Gold Coast performance. I'm sure that Tim Sheens will be concerned with the amount of handling errors. It is really the Canberra's first hit out as Mal Meninga straight through, looking for support, comes in the shape of Finau. Good tackle there and cover from Steve Weston. So Meninga at dummy half just on the quarter line, across for Stone. Back it comes for uh, Wesley. And centre field just outside the quarter. I was trying to put this away. Walters. They've been knocked down by the coast. No, it wasn't. Here's Vicoso. Vicoso playing the ball forward, threads his way through, tried to get a one-handed pass away to Walters, but it's rolled forward. Yeah, trying to do a little bit too much here, Jimmy Vicoso. Played the ball forward, Steve Wallace backing up. Ball just popped forward and no doubt it went forward. But Steve Wallace, as all the good players do, played the whistle. It looks a little bit worse where it took a pretty bad knock early on. Now here's the coast with Weston. Just on the corner. It 
Andy Gill. Stood there for what seemed an eternity before he was able to offload. Well, they've got just over a minute here, Ian, so they really have to take these check. Great ball to Steve Weston. Chips over the top. It'll be a penalty against Nagus. They'll have to get the ball as quick as they can. You don't want to be lying there. Got to get play going as soon as they can. This is all time being wasted. Good work from the Gold Coast. Urgency in their play. The little kick, Nagus deliberately getting in front of Weston. Moved to do so, and that was the dead giveaway. So they're going to have one set of six at the Raiders in their own 20 metre area, trailing by four. Now here's the Raiders coming up to within 10 or 11 from the Canberra line. Coleman putting it high in the air. Up they go for it. Who has it? And it's Jimmy Vacoso who comes up with it for the Raiders. Vacoso is finally pulled down about 35 out. And, uh, well, he seems to be a bit winded. He jumped up for that and made the good run. As the full-time siren sounds, the referee blows full-time. And it is a win to the Canberra Raiders over the Gold Coast, 18 to 14. We'll take a break and come back with the man of the match. Welcome back to Penrith Football Stadium. Canberra have run out winners over the Gold Coast tonight, 18 points to 14. Some pretty good players there for the Canberra side. David Ferner had a big game. And out of the match, they went to their mercurial hooker, Steve Wallers, hard-running player and the incumbent Australian test hooker. Well done, Steve, on behalf of two. He's a plenty of money there for you. Um, what do you think of what do you think of the, your performance, the Canberra performance? Oh, mate, I uh, got a bit of a whack around the sky and early, actually, and I was I feeling a million dollars tonight. I probably did okay the things I did, but my work rate was a bit down. But uh, Big Mal was out there the whole match, and I thought he uh, led the blokes real well tonight. And Steve Stone at the halfback, uh, still a bit of indecision there as to who will be halfback until Ricky comes back, and I thought he went pretty well. Yeah, he's a good player, you know. We, uh, we've certainly got plenty of confidence in uh, in Brutus to play halfback or uh, young Troy that uh, started with us tonight. So we're just happy to get away with the win first up, mate. What did you make of the Gold Coast effort? You know, they come out like usual, they're having a go. I'm, they've beaten us uh, twice out of the last five times they played us, so we're certainly not invincible to them, and they, and they went awful close again tonight. Well done, Steve. Back after the break, we've got more of the Tui's Challenge Cup coming your way.